I'm black and beautiful. Black history. This is MIP. Black history. A gift from Sherry's Black Berries is a perfect way to make a big impression this Valentine's Day. Black Go ahead and think history. inside the box, Valentine's. Black Your berries will arrive in Sherry's Black Berries history. signature gift box with a beautiful ribbon. No Black gift wrap history. required. You can send Sherry's Berries or any of their decadent gourmet gifts to their to your Valentine's and save 20% on gifts over $29 with promo code PROGRESS. Fresh, juicy strawberries dipped in milk, dark and white chocolatey goodness, then topped with rich chocolate chips, chopped nuts, and signature swizzles. Choose delivery date and it's guaranteed. Customer satisfaction is always number one or your money back. Hurry in order today. Valentine's Day is next week. There's only one way to get 20% off an unforgettable gift of over $29 from Sherry's Berries. Visit berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com today and enter code PROGRESS at checkout. That's berries.com, code PROGRESS. Again, visit berries.com, B-E-R-R-I-E-S.com today and enter code PROGRESS at checkout. And look, if you don't have a Valentine, just give some Sherry's Berries to a friend anyway and say you're doing it in memory of Frederick Douglass' birthday. You can do that too. So that's an option. Celebrate Frederick Douglass' birthday. Give some... Love and Black stuff Can like I send that. him some Sherry's Berries? You, you're right. He Black probably would like some. I'm sure Trump's spending a day with him. Um, 866-997-4748. Black History Month. We've got another author joining us. It's good to talk about books during Black History Month. Here's a book right here on more beautiful and terrible history. Folks, we're streaming on uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Make it plain. We up on all three? All right, so check it out. Joining Black us now, history. the author of this book, A More Beautiful and Terrible History, history. The Uses and Misuses of Civil Black Rights History. history. Our Black guest history. is a distinguished professor of political science at Brooklyn Black College history. at the City University of New York, the author of Black seven history. books and numerous Black articles history. on the history of the Black freedom Black struggle history. and on the contemporary politics of Black race history. in the United States. Black Her New York history. Times best-selling biography, The Rebellious Life of Mrs. Rosa Parks, won the 2014 NAACP Image Award and the Letitia Woods Brown Award from the Association of Black Women Historians. Joining us now is, um, well, she, we did have her, but she's not there. <laughs> I went to go pick up the phone and she's gone. <laughs> okay, we lost her, so we'll get it back. Um, Jean Theo Harris is going to be with us, folks. A more beautiful and terrible history. Uh, the uses and misuses of the civil rights movement. Um, 8669 says, while we, while we get her back, Charles in Miami, real quick, Charles, quick comment, please. Thank you. Bless you. Hey, um, I, don't, I don't appreciate Donald Trump trying to spend my taxpayer money on no stupid parade. If he wants a parade, tell him first. We'll let them do it. The Democrats say, just go ahead and sign up. <gasps> I don't hear the list. I love it. Enlist. Enlist. But, but like somebody Enlist. tweeted yesterday, he already had a parade in Charlottesville. Yes, he did. But you see, he didn't get he didn't get to go out there with his um you know his general uniform, and that's probably what he's gonna have on anyway. Yeah, he already had a parade in Charlottesville, so he don't need no another parade. So. Right, but Mark, I got one question. I I, I can't though, Charles. I gotta go. Hit me hit me up tomorrow. We got our guest on. We don't have a lot of time left. Uh, the book, as I said, A More Beautiful and Terrible History by Gene Theo Harris. Also, um, uh, the author, as I said, of The Rebellious Life of Mrs. Rosa Parks. Gene's with us now. Gene, uh, God bless you. Good morning. Happy Black History Month. Happy Black History Month to you. Gene, I have to ask you this as a, uh, and, and I, your work is incredible and we all appreciate it. Um, but I think it's also important for people to understand why uh, someone like you who's white, is so uh -huh. passionate um, and so thorough about black history and the black freedom struggle. Well, and first, thank you for saying that. Um, I mean, I think it's essential, right? This is not just uh, history for black people, right? It's history for all people. And that means there's a responsibility, not just for black people to learn it, but for white people to learn it, for Latino people to learn it, for Asian American people to learn it. Right. And, um, because I think to understand both where we are in this country, right, our history, but also our present and our future, I think there's no way to know how to go forth without a more kind of sober kind of reckoning with with this history and kind of what it also offers us for today. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I just wanted to get, and, and I knew you would say it, I just wanted people to, to hear that because some people sometimes can be curious about those kind of things. I'll never forget years ago when Ken Burns did one of his movies, J- the Jack Johnson movie. Mm-hmm. I had him in studio, and, and of course Ken Burns is white, and Ken said mm-hmm. this to me. He said, Mark, if history, if all history is the galaxy, black history is the sun. Mm. <laughs> and it was just profound to hear him say that yes, and, yes, and, yes. And, and I think we all know what he meant by that congratulations on the book about Absolutely. Rosa Parks I, I want to just mention a book about Rosa Parks you really more than anybody else Gene were responsible for getting us out of this notion that Rosa Parks was just some old worn down tired seamstress who didn't feel like getting up out of her seat she'd been tired all day I mean you let us know that there was a lot more to her, the whole Reese Taylor piece, and people mm-hmm. are still learning about that. But you're that's you're right. largely responsible for letting folks know, no, that's not quite the story of, of Rosa Parks. So right. I want to congratulate you for that. Thank you. And I think we have to remember also Rosa Parks spent the second half of her life in the North, in Detroit, fighting the racism of the Jim Crow North. And I think we often, you know, cut off her story in Montgomery, and that's a hugely important story, right? And we're learning more and more. And I think you know, all of the attention to Reese Taylor and the organizing in the 1940s and 1950s around cases involving rape and sexual violence. I think it's such a needed conversation, right? But we also have to look at the second half of Rosa Parks' life, right? I mean, one of the cases she works on is the case of Joanne Little, right? A woman um, who is uh, forced to perform sex on um, a jail guard, right? And that, that's a huge organizing campaign in the 1970s around her right to self-defense, even as a person in jail, right? Yeah. So Rosa Parks takes this forward, right, um, throughout her life. And she's, she's struggling in Detroit, right, against segregation in Detroit, against yeah. police brutality in Detroit, right? It's a huge story. Yeah, yeah. Gene Thiel Harris with us. And just one other bit of business to get out of the way. Are you, is, is, are you related to Liz? I sure am related to Liz. Is that your sister? She's my sister. Isn't aren't they doing a, her and Reverend Barber doing amazing stuff with the new Poor People's Campaign? They are. So Liz Theo Harris is one of the co conveners of the Poor People's Campaign. She almost got arrested in the Capitol the other day. You all can see the video on our mm-hmm. feed on Facebook, make it plain. Because I was confused. Mm-hmm. I said, wait a minute, is Liz Jean or is Jean Liz? I couldn't figure it out. Then I said, Oh, okay, this must be Jean's sister and I see the resemblance uh, <laughs> right. as well. Right. right. So right. it's 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 all in uh it's all in, in the family. They're a double threat, the y'all. Exactly. They're a double threat. Um so first of all, this is a, a fascinating title. Unpack that for us as we talk about black history and black history month. A more beautiful and terrible history. What do you mean by that, Gene? What are we missing? So it's from James Baldwin, from yes. James Baldwin's sort of prophetic talk to teachers. And his, so the quote from him is, American history is longer, larger, more various, more beautiful, and more terrible than anything anyone has ever said about it. Um, and I, I've always loved that quote and that speech. Um, but what, I, what I'm trying to do with the title is to say, sort of looking at a fuller history of the civil rights movement, looking at a more uncomfortable history of the civil rights movement um, that includes the struggle in the North, that includes the kind of variety of ways that racism was upheld, that that includes the way that the media sort of often stood in the way of the struggle, that includes, you know, um, that it was the civil rights movement was deeply unpopular, right? That is a more sober, a more uncomfortable history. Yeah. But also learning this history Um, And learning the extent of the courage, learning the extent of the people who led the struggle, right? One of the chapters in the book is about the leadership of high school students. And so I think when we see that, right, it's also more beautiful. It's also more inspiring. It's also more fuel, right, to where we are today in terms of kind of the issues we face, the sort of injustice we are seeing, um, and what we need to do to go forward. Yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of the North, I was at I was at the Rainbow Push Wall Street project last night and one of the panelists was Dr. Economist Dr. Julianne Malvo. Mm-hmm. She talked about arriving Jean in Boston College in nineteen seventy. Uh mm-hmm. took the wrong turn, ended up in South Boston, um, mm. and went into a, a, a an establishment and asked where was Boston College? And they called her the N word and everything else. What are you doing on this side of town? They called a the police on her. The uh-huh. police escorted her to Boston College. This is Boston, 1970, folks. This is what Gene's talking about in North. 
Mm-hmm. They escorted her to Boston College, and the police officer said to her, if we ever see you on this side of town again, we're going to throw you in jail. This is Boston in right. 1970. So that is a, another part of the story. It, it, well, and you write about, talk about that in the book, that there's not often told, right? Absolutely, right? That there's this, I mean, there's a decades long movement in Boston to try to get the city and the people of the city to grapple with the fact that the school is the school system is deeply segregated. The city is deeply segregated, mm-hmm. um, and Boston, like, and Bostonians, most Bostonians, sort of turn the other way. They dismiss right. that. They claim it's all about busing, right? Most people, one of the biggest myths, right, about Boston, right, and the Boston quote busing crisis of 1974, when you finally have a federal judge, right order the comprehensive desegregation of Boston public schools. This is a 25-year struggle that's gotten us to this place. And the thing to remember is most people, most kids are being bused in Boston before busing, but they're being bused to segregated schools, right? What the objection comes around busing for desegregation, it's not about busing, right? But I think the part of how the North, we miss the North, is that it sort of, it gets covered in these, in these veils and these euphemisms in these ways to try to sort of say, no, this is not the South, we're not like that, when in fact there are perhaps different kinds of practices, but practices that are equally firm and stubborn in terms of maintaining sort of segregation in, you know, in the liberal North, in the, right, right, right. the cradle of democracy, cradle of liberty, as Boston likes to call itself, right? Well, and what history has done, too, is, you know, they'll talk about Dr. King and then do it out of context, like that, that Dodge Ram commercial. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I hope you saw what the uh, one of the groups did. Um, um, current affairs. They redid the commercial with what Dr. King actually said about capitalism and car ads and all of that. Um, it, but when he wrote the letter from the Birmingham jail and we talked about white liberals and what they weren't doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gene, it's as if people hear that and they don't realize he's talking directly to them and they act like, oh, I agree with Dr. King. He's talking about some of y'all. In the north, right. and, <laughs> and there's that line right in that part where he's talking about the white moderate, and he's saying the white moderate may be more dangerous than the Ku Klux Klan. Who says right? And there's that quote, and where he says, "Who agree? Who says I agree with your goals, right? But not your tactics. Who prefers order to justice, right? That so these he is calling out, and I think one of the things that we forget because over and over, King is calling out his, his you know. Northerners. He's calling out his allies, right? His allies right. who might be strong on pushing for desegregation of the South, but when it comes to their own backyard, they're not. And we hear King right. saying that in 1960, he comes to New York City and gives a, an address to the Urban League, and he's calling there for a liberalism, right? That's not only liberal about the South, but is liberal about sort of jobs and housing and schools right here in New York. Yeah. And that King, I think. We need to see that king, and we need to hear that king, and we need to hear his challenge for us, even, you know, today. Gene Theo Harris, folks, the author of the book a, a More Beautiful and Terrible History. Not a lot of time left, but I do have to touch on this. Coretta Scott King is on the cover of this book uh, mm-hmm. for a reason. You take on what is called the the, the great man mm-hmm. myth of, of history, and, you, and, and deservedly so, you talk about her real contributions and the contributions of women overall to the struggle. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think in this year of, of, of thinking about how we're 50 years to the assassination of Martin Luther King, one of the questions I've been asking is what would it mean to center Coretta Scott King in that conversation? Um, Coretta Scott King is politically active before she meets Martin Luther King. Arguably she's more political than Martin Luther King when they meet. Um, She influences um, and works alongside him, uh, particularly around his growing opposition to Vietnam. Right? It's really her. And there's, you know, at one point he's asked uh, by a reporter after she's given, she comes out earlier, I should say, against the war in Vietnam publicly um, than he does. A reporter asks him, did you educate her? And Dr. King says, no, she educated me. Mm. Um, and then after his assassination, she just, keeps going. She is relentless, right? She is, she keeps up that opposition to the U.S. involvement in Vietnam. She is hugely important to the Poor People's Campaign. That picture on the cover of my book is taken um, at the Poor People's Campaign, at Solidarity Day at the Poor People's Campaign in 1968. So she carries that struggle and the struggle around welfare rights, the struggle around full employment. Um, she, She works on 
uh, divestment uh, and anti-apartheid work uh, yes. around the struggle in she South Africa. Did. I mean, she is. And she got the holiday, too. And then, she, yeah, she got absolutely. the holiday. Absolutely. Folks, absolutely. folks, we're still streaming on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Join us there. We're going to sign off on the radio and just spend a few more minutes with Gene. Those of you on the radio, if all minds are clear, it has been made plain. But those of you on the stream, just just uh, just just to follow up, um, you know, because we were always led to believe. I mean, the, the narrative on her was, oh, she she just played the violin. Right. And she was just meek and just beautiful. And no, <laughs> I mean, no. it was, you know, and, and honestly, you know what this is. I, in this first time I can recall this happening on January the 15th, Bernice King tweeted out as you all honor my father also honor my mother absolutely and it right. touched a lot of us because well you know what bernice is right when have we really shouldn't this holiday not only be for him but yes. for the woman who made it the holiday because it was because of her that it was the holiday in the first place she pushed for it and 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 honestly gene the only picture on the book you had this wonderful picture on the book the only other one that rivals this one to me was her standing over ronald reagan Mm-hmm. Right, now, right. what is the scripture? I'm, I'm going to just do some scripture here, Gene. Good. Uh, your, good. Your, your first prefix of your name is Theo anyway, so I think I can say uh-huh. this. Thou preparest a table before me uh-huh. in the presence of my enemy. <laughs> 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 if that is not a vivid portrayal of that scripture in action, I don't know what is. Right, right, right. Can I tell you one story about Coretta Scott King? Please, absolutely. So, um... There's a hugely important moment in the Montgomery bus boycott, and we know this moment, which is the moment when the King's house gets bombed. Um, and Martin Luther King is not there. Coretta Scott King and baby Yolanda, right, uh, less than two months old, are in the house when the house is bombed. They thankfully get out. But as you might imagine, both Martin, Martin Luther King's dad and Coretta Scott King's dad come down to Montgomery, and what do you think they say? They what? say, you need to get out of here. And if you, and then they say to Dr. King, they say, if you're not willing to leave, at least Coretta and the baby should leave. Mm-hmm. And do you know what Coretta Scott King says? What? We're not going anywhere, right? I mean, this is a hugely important moment, right, in, in the emerging boycott, right? This is before they filed the federal case. This is before they're calling for full desegregation on the bus. Coretta Scott King says, we will not be moved. She says, we're not going anywhere. And mm-hmm. I think um, we often talk about that moment as a courageous moment, right? Dr. King, the city's trying to bait him and, and sort of the black community of Montgomery into sort of using violence. They, people do not take the bait, Dr. King. But I think the other part of that moment that is so crucial, right, is her kind of strength and fortitude and courage in that moment and saying, no, we're not going. I'm not going um, because this is where, you know, this struggle is where we belong and and not just Martin belongs there, but I belong here too. Yeah, yeah. This, these, that's, I'm glad you shared that story. These are important stories to be told. Folks, get the book for Black History Month. That, that's the purpose of Black History Month, y'all, not just to say it's Black History Month, but to read, to enlighten yourself, to learn, study, and understand. This is a groundbreaking piece of work with elements of history and stories that we have not heard before. Uh, it, it, Black History Month is not just one speech. I have a dream. As a matter of fact, Gene, last week on my show, I challenged my listeners to uh, 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 to share an historical figure in Black history they admire, other than Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. You know, because that's easy. Um, right. And I cha- and 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 most of the people called up name women. Uh, so uh, 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 Shirley Chisholm got the most mm-hmm. calls. Then oh. it was uh, Harriet Tubman and Beautiful. and Sojourner Truth. So so women are more uh, in the focus. The Reverend, our dear friend, the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber, writes on the cover of the book. Theo Harris is a historical truth teller. More beautiful and terrible history is crucial for resisting injustice in the face of racism, classism, and militarism. So folks, uh, be sure you get the book. Put it on your shelf for uh, Black History Month. And, and Gene, I know you're not finished. Just g- give us a preview. What's the next big book you're working on? <laughs> um, I, I, this is barely out. Mostly I'm just I'm just doing this. I'm doing um, more Rosa Parks stuff. Uh, as you may know, the Rosa Parks house is coming to Brown University this spring, and we're doing a huge exhibition on Rosa Parks and her, her life of struggle, right? wow. life in the struggle, sort of from Scottsboro kind of all the way to the present. 
Um, okay. So that's kind of what I'm doing this spring. All right. Well, that's so now is, now is Brown where you are right now? No, 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 no. I teach at the City University of New York. I'm, I teach at Brooklyn College. No, I live in New York City. Okay. Well, in that case, let, let's plan some time to get you in studio with us, and we'll let you come in and, and, and do a whole seminar. How about that? That'd be great. We'd love, love we'd love to have you do that in the studio with us. Jean Theo Harris, a more beautiful and terrible history, the uses and misuses of civil rights history. And and especially, folks, um, we I- invite you uh, uh, to, to, to check out the book. Uh, also check out the, the, the reworking of that Dodge Ram. W- weren't you disgusted by that ad too, Jean? I mean, and the soldiers, and the, I mean, I think the... The, there are two things, right, that are so astonishing about that Dodge ad, right, um, in terms of they're taking it from a speech by King, and I hope everyone this week has gone back to that drum major speech. I mean, if the Dodge ad does one good thing, it's that people will read that speech best this week, right? And he's criticizing, right, the the nature of American capitalism right. and advertising and and the ways that it distorts our values and the kind of racism at the heart of American capitalism. But he's also right, critiquing sort of the way the U.S. moves through the world, right? Yeah. He's critiquing U.S. imperialism. He's critiquing kind of a blind nationalism that, is, that disregards human rights both at home and abroad. Yeah. And, um, and to use right, those images right, um, was also deeply disturbing um, in terms of the kind of what King is saying in that speech and then how they use his words. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Gene, again, thank you so much. Love, uh, love this, love that cover photo too. It's, it's really thank beautiful you. and moving. And thank of course, you. James Baldwin's one of my favorite favorites also. Nobody could write like him. That's it, it's oh. just like him, a more beautiful and terrible history. Then Gene, God bless you. We'll get, thank let's you. get you in here in the studio sometime. And until then, we'll see you on the front lines. Okay. Beautiful. Thanks so much. All right. Taking out Jean okay. Theo Harris, folks. All right. Another Black History Month uh, segment here for you. Hope everybody has a good day. Uh, and if all minds are clear, it has been made plain. <laughs>